In today's video, I will talk about how you can use Microsoft Teams for free and how to operate Teams for beginners and share tips along the way. So do stay tuned. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Steph. I run a production house here in Singapore doing photography, videography, live stream and basically everything tech. Welcome to my channel. So first, I would like to talk a little bit about the pricing structure of Microsoft Teams. Most of us start off with the free version which gives you group calling for up to 60 minutes and 100 participants, which is pretty decent and enough for most basic users. If you decide to upgrade to Microsoft 365 Personal or Family, it gives you group calling for up to 30 hours and 300 participants. And of course, other premium features are included like more cloud storage, the ability to use Microsoft apps like Word, Excel and PowerPoint. If you run a small business, you have the three options here, Essentials, Business Basic and Business Standard, which also gives you more hours of group meetings and up to 300 participants. In my opinion, Teams Essentials is the best value for money if you wish to upgrade your free version, if you find it limited. I don't work for Microsoft but I do have an upgraded paid version because I have a few corporate clients that only use Microsoft Teams for their meetings. So I'm just sharing information on how you can get the best out of the free and paid versions of Microsoft Teams. Okay, now let's get back to how we can use the free version of Microsoft Teams. In today's video, it's a beginner's guide. There are two ways in which you can use Teams here, the web version or the desktop version. Most of the core features like call, chat, screen sharing, etc. are available on both versions. But if you want to go full functionality, it's better to go with the desktop version. So for the web version, you can go to teams.microsoft.com and to download the desktop app version, you can go to microsoft.com slash microsoft teams free. I will put both links below for easier reference. So sign in to your Microsoft account if you have one. If not, you can just create it for free. I will sign in to my free account today for the purpose of this video. So once you have signed in to the account, you can see four tabs on the left. First, we will go to the calendar tab where most of the functions are at. So you can see a calendar pops up. This default calendar is the Microsoft calendar. But you can opt to switch to Google calendar if you want to by clicking here. So pop-up comes up and you can add your Google Calendar here. So for today's video example, we will just stick to the Microsoft Calendar. So what I want you to know is that there are three tabs here which are the most important for the Calendar tab. First is uh, Join with an ID, Meet Now and New Meeting. So basically if you hover over the buttons, there's a pop-up explaining to you what these options are. For join with an ID, it means to open a join meeting with an ID panel. So what happens is if you have colleagues or friends who send you a meeting, usually it comes with an, a meeting ID and a meeting passcode. So as you can see here, meeting ID, you will find the meeting ID with the other join info near the bottom of the meeting invite. So typically a meeting invite looks something like this. So here's the meeting ID and you can actually type your meeting ID here and then type in the meeting passcode and then you can join the meeting. So this is basically for other people who sends you a meeting ID, your colleagues, your friends, your boss, and then you can just copy and paste the meeting ID into this part here. So the next button is meet now where you can start a meeting immediately. Remember I told you about this function in the previous uh, one of the videos, the Google Meet video. In real life scenario, it's very seldom that you have to start a meeting immediately. Um, maybe for example, you are, what I experienced from real life is that probably you are chatting with your colleagues over WhatsApp group message, then you say, hey, let's uh, start a Teams meeting instead because we need to discuss some uh, meeting minutes or plans for the next coming quarter. So you come into this uh, meet now option and then you can create your own meeting. So what happens is once you click the button, 
you are able to type in your meeting title so for example i will just leave it as meeting with steph lee here so if you click on get a link to share you actually have a meeting id and a passcode as well remember the previous option of join with an id so with this you can have the link then you can send it via email or you can send it via whatsapp chat to your colleagues or friends and they can click on it to join the meeting then the bottom option is to start a meeting which is to start a meeting immediately so the moment you select this option you actually have the pop-up for logging in into the meeting so as you can see the camera is turned off by default uh, the microphone you can turn it off or on here so once you turn on your video you'll be able to see yourself here yeah you'll be able to see yourself and then before you log in you can actually have the option of selecting your background filters as you can see right now um, my background is pretty clean so uh, i have the option of selecting a background so either i can blur my background looks pretty good or i can select other backgrounds like spaceship office this is actually quite standard across the board i would say for other video conferencing apps like zoom google meet and for microsoft teams itself so it enables you to blur off your background so if you do not want your boss or your whoever to know where you are you can actually change the background okay for this we will just select none okay so before you click join now there's this option at the bottom corner here that is your device settings so it's good to actually click on it and see what options you have before joining the meeting as you can see you have the option of uh, selecting your audio devices by clicking on the drop down here and then most importantly of course is your speaker and your microphone so as you can see the speaker is default to be my, my macbook air speakers so for example you have external speakers like creative or my boss speakers connected if i select the drop down here i will be able to select those as options and you can see uh, for microphone the default again is my macbook air microphone so if you have an option of connecting say an a10 mini or if you have an option of a usb microphone or webcam these options will be available under the drop down when you select them here okay noise suppression okay this is very interesting you need to take note of this um, the default is set to be auto which means that the computer will automatically detect whether there is background noise is very loud or something like that then it will tweak the noise suppression accordingly but somehow in my experience i have realized that um, the noise detection suppression is not that intelligent yet i feel so it sort of masks your voice so much that your voice sounds a little bit robotic so uh, to put it simply in a technical way uh, you sound very robotic because they try to mask off a lot of sound so in my experience if you want to sound natural the best option is actually low or off off it's pretty um, you will pick up all the background sounds so it's not that advisable so my strong recommendation is to set it to low okay then you can have the option of video settings here so the camera you can see the default is the facetime hd camera uh, if you have a webcam or you have a external uh, camera that is connected to your laptop then you will be able to see those as options under the drop down here as well so for us now we are pretty much set for this uh, settings so we will close the device settings and then we can join the meeting so the moment you join in because you are starting the meeting so you are the host so you have actually four options here you can copy the meeting link you can share via outlook calendar share via google calendar as i explained uh, a little bit earlier that you can actually add your google calendar into your teams uh, meeting app and the other one is to share by default email 
So for us, uh, we're not going to do anything because today is just a test, but these options are actually pretty straightforward to understand. So whichever option you need to choose, just select it. So as you can see, we are in this uh, setup here. The options are pretty similar for a lot of video conferencing apps. So I will go through one by one what is uh, this, what do the icons mean actually? Okay, for chat, if you open the chat box, okay, for, for our example, there's only me inside the meeting. So usually you will see uh, more people on this part, like Steph Lee joined the conversation, then you can have probably Peter, Michelle, uh, Josephine, or whoever that joins the meeting. Then you can have a chat here. So what happens is this is like a chat box. So you can type, hi everyone. Welcome to my meeting. Let's start. Yep. So these are the more commonly used. You can change the format. You can add an attachment. You can do an emoji or you can do a GIF. So this is basically just meeting chat. So what I find useful for meeting chat is, for example, if I want to share certain links. So for example, if I talk about Hey, uh, you, everyone, you can go to this particular file that I uploaded on Google Drive. So it's either I can actually attach the file here using the icon here, or I can send the link, Google Drive, uh, Google Drive link, something like that, to everyone who is in the chat group. Then they can click on the link. Or for example, if I want to share certain YouTube videos, uh, to highlight certain points that I make during the meeting, then I can also put in the chat meeting here. So basically that sums up. Okay, one thing to note here, take a look. This meeting chat is muted. So you can actually unmute the chat notifications, right? So what the, what, what's good about this is such that uh, if you are in the talk, you are talking to your bosses or colleagues you are in the meeting, you do not want the chat notifications to come up and bother you. So you can actually mute them here and then you can unmute to send notification for all meetings. So once we're done with this meeting chat, then you can, the second option here is people or participants, which we more commonly uh, know them by. So as you can see in this meeting, there's only me because I remember I started the meeting. So I'm the organizer here. Anybody else who is in this chat group will appear in this uh, list below. So for example, okay, this search function you see here is very useful. So for example, there are maybe like 50 people in this meeting and then there is someone that you particularly want to find to send him a message or to highlight or something like that. You can actually type his name here. For example, I can type like Philip. And then if Philip is inside, he will be able to, uh, you will be able to find him here. Okay, so in this meeting. So what's the purpose of uh, finding this person you will ask, right? So for example, okay, since there's only me in this meeting, I will search for myself, Steph Lee. Okay, I can't search for myself because I'm the organizer. Okay, so if you manage to find the person, what happens is you can actually click on the three buttons here and then you can pin, hide, or spotlight for everyone. All right, so what is the meaning of pinning for me? Okay, so when you pin someone, it means that my, you can see the pin icon at the bottom here. So it's only local meaning to say I'm only pinning this person. So for example, uh, you're in the chat meeting and you do not pin anybody. I'm a participant. Okay, so I like my boss's face very much. So I will pin him and then what I see is just the boss's face, uh, his video. So even if the boss is not talking, it will just show his video. So you get my point. Uh, Pinning is not that used uh, in my experience for Teams meeting. However, the other option 
spotlight for everyone is used more often okay spotlight is something like pinning but it's pinning for everyone so for example uh, if you have a rundown so if it's a Microsoft team so for example the time now is uh, 12 30 so at 12 35 uh, boss so for example your boss name is Philip so boss Philip will come in and talk at 12 35 so the moment he comes in I will go to his name right I will type Philip all right then Philip pops up and then I go to the three buttons here and I spotlight for everyone so it, as you can see this uh, pop-up comes up you highlight your video for everyone in the meeting so what happens is if you click yes then your boss Philip will be the pin video for everybody in the chat all right so now you understand what's the purpose of uh, spotlighting for participants okay so the next icon is called raise your hand so uh, in my experience there are two examples here first someone is talking and you wish you are you want to be polite and you do not want to interrupt him so you can actually click on this raise your hand icon the other option is usually uh, the host will mute everybody so even if you want to ask a question or you want to be able to speak that is where you click on raise your hand all right so as you click as you see i i've clicked on raise your hand so what happens is this yellow icon you can see the yellow bar surrounding is being highlighted and then there is this hand gesture here that says one also do also note that take a look here for people it actually has uh, unread so so you can see if you are the host when someone raises their hand you can actually see who raised their hand here right so you can go in and you can see so i i am the one who raised my hand so it's under uh, the organizer so it's highlighted in yellow <coughs> so once you are done raising your hand you can actually lower your hand so once uh, in my experience probably the host or the speaker will say oh hey Steph uh, you have a question um, you can speak now then they will unmute you or you can unmute yourself to speak in the team's meeting so the next icon here is to react okay react is usually something like what you do for your whatsapp uh, someone sends you good food then you just put a thumbs up i can put a smiley face here so you can send a reaction so it actually appears uh, here you can see yeah so you can select other icon like someone says something which is like very good and you feel loved so you can put a heart icon as well Okay, the next icon I'm going to talk about is view. So you can actually change your view. So you can see right now, this is a one person view. So if there are more people who get into the Teams meeting and you want to change the view, you have the option of gallery, which is boxing up. So for example, if you have four people in a chat group or two people, they are actually split up symmetrically. So two, they'll be like that. And four will be like this. So the other option is you can have a speaker view, right? So speaker view will be will mean that whoever is speaking, you will see whoever is speaking. So for example, if, if there's an option of four people speaking here, four people in the op, uh, team's meeting, and then first person is speaking, then it will show that person. So the next person who speaks, it will change. So for me, in my experience, it's pretty chaotic actually, yeah because sometimes someone especially in a group meeting where no one is muted so everyone is able to talk then it will start popping up so in my experience uh, what i had before was for a wedding live stream so they were using using microsoft teams and then because uh, they want everyone to come in and be able to converse freely with each other the relatives and the friends so it was so chaotic i think there was about maybe 30 to 40 people in the in the team's meeting and then everyone was talking and the screen was just switching and switching so uh, it depends on your in your uh, scenario as well and what what you use use it for but most of the time we just use the gallery view and then if you wish to change the view usually it's just like i mentioned previously spotlighting or pinning it 
So you do have other options here, uh, which is to show gallery at the top, turn off incoming video, or you can have a full screen option. So these are actually pretty self-explanatory. Next up, I will go into more actions. Okay, under this three dots button here, you can click on the meeting info, which is, uh, as you can see, meeting with Steph Lee at this time. <clears throat> And then you can actually copy the join info and send it to your colleagues. So a very, uh, this thing happens quite often. So for example, we have already started the video, started the video conferencing, we are in the chat. Then probably your one of your colleagues wants to join in or you probably want to get someone from HR to join in. So what you can do is actually to, the fastest way to get the link is to click on these three buttons, meeting info, and then you can copy the join info. So you have copied it to clipboard. Immediately, you can go into your um, email app and then paste the email, paste his email address, and then send it off to him. And you can see here as well, you see? Earlier, we remember before we joined, there was this meeting ID and then the passcode as well. So the meeting ID is here and the passcode is here. <clears throat> so another uh, very, Another very real example that I've encountered is you just want to pop in a quick message. So you can actually highlight this part. Then you can copy and then paste it in your WhatsApp. So the person can just join in using the meeting ID and the passcode. Okay, so background effects, as we have mentioned earlier, Remember before we joined the video, you have to, you, you had the option of selecting background effects, right? So it's the same here. So you can actually preview, right? How you're gonna look like. See, so this is how it's going to look like. Once you select your background and then you can actually preview how it looks like before uh, applying it for everyone to see. Okay, so once you're done, you can stop preview. So if you apply and turn on the video, then people will see this, right? So okay, for this, we will just click on known, apply and then close. Okay, language and speech, okay? This is a very interesting uh, function. Okay, what happens in real life is, for example, if you are in a very noisy environment and you are not able to hear what the speaker is talking or your boss is saying. So once you have selected the live caption, you can see that it automatically generates what I'm talking and it's pretty accurate, right? So a lot of times where people want to do transcripts as well, and uh, whoever is not able to hear clearly, or maybe they are not um, <clears throat> natively, their English is not that good. Okay, sorry, I'm assuming, well, we are speaking English here. So uh, maybe their command of the language is not that good and it's easier for them to see the written uh, words, just like watching movies, right? Uh, some of you, especially me, I can't. I have to watch subtitles when I watch movies. If not, I, I get pretty lost, especially when, for example, shows like Star Trek or whatever, when they describe certain planets, the names, I have to see what, what the, the actual names <coughs> on the subtitles before I can actually follow the video, follow the, the movie. So that uh, we can see now. So. You have the, actually the, yeah, remember I was just saying, I assume everyone spoke English here. So you can have the option of actually changing your language. Right now there are, wow, there are a lot of languages available. So for example, okay, I only speak Chinese other than English. So I, I shan't click on any of this, but if any of these languages apply for you viewers out there, you can just select it and then, they will um, generate accordingly. Well, let's try for Chinese, okay? Hi, ni hao. 
Not bad, not bad. Wow, it can detect English and Chinese as well. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. So I'm just going to try saying, have you eaten today? 你今天吃饱了吗? Okay, that's pretty accurate. I'm pretty impressed for captions because for myself, I've tried a few others, uh, Google Meet and Microsoft Teams. Well done, Microsoft Teams. So, okay, for this, since we are done with this sample, we will just switch back to uh, <clears throat> default English, right? And then for caption op options, you can have, you can select the caption settings as well. So this is pretty much actually just uh, visuals. So you can have the styles, this is what your captions will look like, font colors, medium, position, and whatnot. But basically, it just appears right at the bottom here, as you can see. Oh, you're still capturing. Oh yeah, I haven't turned it off yet. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the live captioning. Pretty awesome feature, right? Anyway, even if you don't use it, you don't need it, it's always good to turn it on so you can actually see what the speaker is talking about. Okay, so the last one is uh, actually settings. So device settings is actually pretty similar to what we have uh, done uh, before we joined, remember? So you can actually select your options here. Again, noise suppression, I've kept it low. And uh, meeting options and accessibility. So meeting options, uh, what you need to know about meeting options is, for example, okay, what is this lobby, right? Lobby is, for example, when you start a meeting, everybody comes into this uh, <clears throat> area before they are led in into this video. In real life example, okay, so for weddings, right? I'm gonna give you an example for weddings for now. So weddings, everyone who is in the lobby, say for example, your wedding live stream starts at 10 a.m. So people who come in at 9.50, they have not joined in the wedding yet. They are not able to see what's happening yet because your stream starts at 10. Similarly, another example will be for corporate, which is more used for Microsoft Teams. So what happens is usually, when, we, when I go to my corporate clients' uh, meeting, they are set up, uh, they, are, they are actually still preparing. So they are doing rehearsals. They have this uh, rundown schedule, timesheet. They are putting in people. And then uh, all these people are actually kept in the lobby before we are all ready to start the Teams chat. So who can pass, bypass the lobby? So you have three options here. People who were invited, everyone, and only me. Okay, only me, the option is usually only for the host. So for example, if you want to select, so if you do not want the lobby, right, you can put everyone. So what's the difference between people who are invited and everyone? So in, um, in a corporate teams meeting, for example, usually like for example, town halls, you have 100 people coming in. So people who are invited are usually presenters. So for example, the heads of departments, uh, your biggest boss, that's how I can think of. So these people who are invited into the team's meeting, they can bypass the lobby and come straight into the team's meeting. Then if you select everyone, that means everyone, all the 100 people will be able to bypass the lobby and come in to this. Okay, that makes that reminds me of something which I want to tell you. Uh, if you do not put everyone can bypass the lobby, whoever wants to join, as the host, you have to let them in one by one. So you can see a pop-up that comes up. Uh, Michael Tan is join, wants to join the meeting. Then you have to click on it and then allow him to come in. So again, I've mentioned earlier who can present. So it's either everyone or only myself, who is the host. So accessibility, this is uh, pretty much self-explanatory as well. So there's a sign language option to prioritize signers and then captions. All right, now we are come to the camera and the mic. So these are actually very basic functions as you can figure out yourself. So if I want to turn off my camera, I can just click on this and then it just shows my initials, Steph Lee, so it just puts SL. 
and then uh, if I want to turn off my mic, I mute. So if I want to unmute myself, then I have to click on this. So the really quite amazing thing about this microphone is just is that if you are talking and then it realizes that you're muted, it actually highlights you. This is very common actually. So what happens is uh, in a Teams meeting, usually there's only one person talking, for example, the boss. And then uh, you raise your hand when you want to talk. But then you forgot that you're actually muted right here. So once you when you attempt to talk, there's actually a pop-up here that says you are muted. And then they will actually prompt you to unmute yourself by clicking on the mic button here. Right? Okay, next up is the most amazing thing I have found on Microsoft Teams other than uh, the live captions okay so this option of sharing your content which is on some other apps is known as share screen present screen or whatnot okay so sharing content so what is amazing about Microsoft Teams I realize is you see uh, you can have the option of four presenter modes okay before I get into the presenter mode they just want to do a quick one so even a share content and then you have the option of including your computer sound. So for example, if you want to share YouTube links or you want to play files, video files on your computer, you need to check this. If not, um, people in the chat will not be able to hear any sound. Okay, I want to get into this presenter mode because it's very exciting. Okay, so presenter mode, this is the usual <clears throat> boring presenter mode where you see what you see, right? And then you see things that you share. Stand out, okay. So, okay, to select it, you select stand up and you, then you click on screen. And then this is what you see. Ta da! Amazing, right? So, for example, if you want to tell someone you want to <clears throat> share your screen as your background, and then you want to say, okay, if, uh, on the 27, 27 of uh, March, all right, at 10 p.m., 10 a.m., here, you need to select or for example okay everyone if you just go to your uh, adobe powerpoint uh, sorry adobe photoshop here pretty cool right so once you're done with it for example you're done okay another thing is you can switch your position actually so it's default to be on the right side so you can actually switch it to the left or you can actually increase the size okay so once you're done actually you can click on the button here and then uh, <coughs> minimize it and stop sharing right so uh, the other option is side by side which is actually very useful it looks very professional okay i'm going to show you how it looks like so you have your face here and then you have a nice i don't know default microsoft background and then you have your screen here actually see so you can actually share your screen here so whatever I do on the mouse here, it actually, you guys can see it. So similarly, you can actually change your position and then increase the size. So the size increase is actually making yourself smaller and be able to see a bigger screen. So this, uh, for my experience, from my experience, usually I just put myself to be very small because uh, for Teams meeting, people usually want to hear your voice and then see what you are sharing. So it doesn't make sense for me to be as big as what I'm sharing actually right <clears throat> so I will also talk about this last feature which is reporter so what happens for reporter is you can actually see I'm actually in the background so it actually looks like you know uh, breaking news so this is you know you know for example like you watch news uh, a reporter then you can have the person at the foreground. See, I'm at the foreground, right? I'm at the foreground. So I'm at the foreground and then you have, well, not at the back. But actually for me, all options are pretty cool. So uh, basically for myself, I actually use the side-by-side -side more often because I actually don't get into what I'm sharing because I, I, I had a particular client who actually used the standout and then he was actually blocking what he was sharing and he was trying to move around. Well, uh, experiences you get when you do live stream. So, right. So we have actually pretty much gone through all the features here in this uh, 
Microsoft Teams. And then uh, again, you can see top, the, 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 the ticker here is how long you have actually um, talked for. So again, remember at the start of the meeting, I, I mentioned you have 60 minutes for free, uh, free Teams meeting and now it's only 30 minutes. So once you're done, you can actually click on the lift button here, right? So, okay, uh, when you click on the drop down, there's actually two options. And these two options actually are only available if you are the host. So you can actually leave the meeting even if you are the host. So someone else will be assigned as the host. Usually, uh, usually for Teams meeting, usually you have more than one host if it's a big town hall. And the other one is to end the meeting okay so right now since we are done with this we will just end the meeting right as you see the option here end the meeting so i'll end the meeting for everyone everyone will be kicked out of the meeting if i leave they can still stay in the meeting and talk to each other right yep so now we are back to this right so uh just the last part of this new meeting this allows you to schedule a new meeting, right? So for example, if I want to, oh great, yeah. You see, with your current team's plan, you get up to 60 minutes per meeting. So it actually informs you what is your current team plan. So for example, I have a meeting with Steph Lee, right? So I can add the required attendees here, whoever's email, I'll just drop it in. So if I have a meeting, say this Friday, right? At um let's see 10 a.m for an hour no two hours right so you will automatically generate the two hour here and then no it does not repeat and location and details uh we are going to talk about this year's profits something like that All right so once you're done and you click on save so yeah, the Teams meeting actually gives you two options. So one, you can either copy the link or you can share it via Google Calendar. So that's about it. So let's take a look. So 29th, right? We have created this. So we go down to 10. And we have the meeting created here. So if you want to change anything in this meeting, you can actually just click on it and you have the option to edit it here. Right? Okay, it's pretty self-explanatory. So basically, this is that's about it. Uh, the four tabs on the left, I've actually explained the most important tab, which is this one, and then uh, chat. Uh, usually, okay, after you created a new event, the chat will be available here. So people, remember this chat? I created this, right, 29. So whoever wants to, it's, it's, it's a, actually a very good function by Microsoft Teams that uh, any information I want to put, I can actually put it down here. For example, uh, please see attach a document that I will use for the meeting on Friday, right? And then I can just attach a file here and then people can actually download it take a look at it, probably the meeting highlights. And that's about it. So there you have it. A beginner's video, a beginner's guide to learning how to use Microsoft Teams in 2024. If you are a beginner or basic user, I hope you learned something from today's video. If you are an advanced user from Microsoft Teams, I hope that is a good refresher for you. I hope you found today's video useful and if you like more of such videos in the future, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see and I will try my best to come up with the video. Until the next video, I'm Steph, take care, bye bye.